Salmonella is the second leading cause of foodborne illness in the U.S. It's the leading cause of food-related hospitalization and death. Salmonella kills over 370 people in the U.S. each year. Sadly, the outbreak you are about to hear resulted in 56 illnesses, 7 hospitalizations, and 1 death. On June 22, 2010, after seven weeks of hospitalization, Mrs. Zella Pluhoff of Athens, Ohio, passed away from complications caused by foodborne illness. This is an account of her hospitalization and death as told by her son and daughter, Philip Pluhoff and Shelley Cooper. My name is Philip Pluhoff. Um, uh, my mom uh, and I actually uh, contracted uh, salmonella uh, poisoning in, in, a, in a local restaurant. I got really sick and my mom got really sick and my mom didn't recover and, and uh, we're pretty, uh, pretty sad about that still after a couple years. My name is Shelley Cooper. We were in Las Vegas. Um, I had gone out there with some friends and it was a couple more days before we came home um, and I, I did not realize I don't think I even knew then that she had salmonella poisoning because they hadn't diagnosed it. Uh, I didn't realize the seriousness of it. We uh, went to our favorite restaurant, and my mom and I always always ordered the same thing. We liked it. Uh, we, we shared it. Uh, it. It was called a special dinner for two, as it happens. And Dad always uh, went for a, uh, a salad, you know. When we woke up uh, at breakfast, my mom and I had uh, diarrhea. And it felt pretty bad, and Dad had nothing. And as the morning progressed, then uh, we both continued to get really severe diarrhea. And then after that was all gone, then we started uh, throwing up, uh, vomiting. And after that was all gone, then we got the dry heaves. And it's it's not prompt fun. It's 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 really quickly very debilitating. I felt really bad because after they left for the hospital, I went and light, laid down in bed. And that's where I spent like the next three or four days. Um, and you can't keep anything down. I don't know if you're familiar with salmonella, but anytime you take a drink of anything, it's just a matter of moments and you're running to the bathroom. And so, so after like three or four days, I got the strength to call mom to ask, you know, see how she was doing at the hospital. And one of the first things she said to me was, did you think you were gonna die? I was talking to mom and she said, you know, it's the first time in my life but I thought I, I wasn't going to make it through the night, she said. She was in a great deal of pain, um, and it, it, it was like, a, it was like a, a, a bad dream that just didn't end. You know, one thing would happen and something else would happen. And, um, but the one thing that was constant was that she had severe abdominal pain from the time she got sick until the day that she passed away. And nothing relieved it, and it was constant. It, and my mom wasn't a complainer, but it, towards the end, it was, you know. And finally, I think she got to the point where, she, you know, she would have wanted anything done to make the pain go away. It's a terrible feeling, you know, for someone so close to you who, who's, who's in the hospital, you know, and you know what pain she's in because you're in the same pain, you know. But but I knew where she was coming from because because during that time I was just lying in bed and had no strength at all. All I was concerned with was, was you know, getting well. That's all I wanted to do, you know. Poor mom, she just, uh, she just, it was, honestly, it was seven weeks of suffering. It was awfully tough to watch. I don't know how she kept the attitude she did, though, but she never, uh, She never cried. Uh, the last seven weeks of her life. And, um, she was so strong. Uh, she was scared uh, to spend nights by herself in the hospital. And uh, one time she said to me that she was having bad dreams. You know, I mean, what do you say to her? I said, well, we're not going to think, we're not going to talk about that. You know, we're not going to talk about that, Mom. 
and from the time she got sick, she basically was not able to eat anything else. I think she ate a, a sandwich or something, didn't she, when she came home from the hospital for that mm -hmm. brief period of time. But after that, then she wasn't able to eat. And she had a feeding tube and um, IVs and a catheter, Foley catheter. And, and she was incontinent a stool, and that just really bothered her. And, and it was just not my mom. And uh, she just suffered, and, and, and most people don't deserve to suffer no matter what they do, but she especially did not deserve. And that was the hardest part. And I feel I should move on. But had she not died the way she did, you know, everybody dies. It's a part of life, but it wasn't her time. And that's why it's so hard. And still to this day, um, <laughs> something will happen. And, um, and I think I got to call mom and dad. And then I remember she loved me. Life, life, I don't know if you know it, but life has changed because his mom was... Uh, we like to tell her, you know, while she was in the hospital, she was the rock. She really was the rock that kept, that kept us together. And life is, it's different, you know, when your rock is not there anymore, you know. You, 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 you go on, but it's, it's not the same. You're, it affects everybody. Every, everybody is affected. If I uh, were, were going into a, a food service operation where they're handling food and preparing it and whatnot, I would say uh, uh, this, it's, it's really not that hard to serve safe food. I mean, pay attention to the temperatures, uh, pay attention to, to keeping your food cold when, you're, when it's in the, in the fridge, keep the fridge at the proper temperature, uh, and, and cook your food uh, properly. I mean, it, it's, it, 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 I, mean I, I cook food. It can't be that hard, you know. Uh, I know they get hurried. Don't be hurried. That, 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 should be, that should be on the wall. Don't hurry. Do it right. If they don't know how to do it right, they really should learn how to do it right before they uh, handle food. Somebody has to be overseeing. You know, there has to be oversight. Somebody has to watch, make sure that people are washing their hands and zero tolerance. And somebody needs to be accountable. You can protect your customers and prevent foodborne illness by washing hands and food contact surfaces often, not working when you are sick, not touching ready-to-eat food with your bare hands, separating raw meats from other foods, cooking to the correct temperature, cooling food promptly, maintaining food at the proper temperature and time.